Hello you, welcome to Geekism and welcome back to Nuna Kanata, uh, which is our sandbox zoo here in Planet Zoo. Uh, so to catch you up quickly then, if you are new here, Nuna Kanata is um, in Nukatus, uh, which is an Inuit language for uh, land of Canada. And that's because I live in Canada. And uh, as you can probably tell from the accents, I'm not I'm not originally Canadian. I'm from the UK, uh, but I live in Canada now, and I really wanted to sort of represent uh, this beautiful country that I now call my home in a series here, and also try something a little bit different to the regular kind of zoos that have been going around, uh, and do more of a sort of conservation project. I, I say. Um, different. There's lots of people doing these awesome conservation projects, to be honest with you, and gardens and uh, all sorts of other cool stuff that isn't just zoos, and I should expect nothing less, really, uh, from the awesome uh, <laughs> planet community. Um, so it's really great to see some fun stuff. But uh, but yeah, so we're working off of uh, what the awesome Mike Sheets did for us in the last episode, which was the, um, the fantastic uh, cliff face uh, that's just behind us here, where we're working. And I uh, really wanted to play around with the uh, with the scenery, with the landscape here, and try something a bit different. And I really wanted to get uh, a large uh, water feature in here, because I'm a YouTuber, and YouTubers have to put waterfalls in their videos. Uh, to the point where this is uh, actually named YouTuber Falls, <laughs> as a bit of a nod to, uh, to the fact that during the beta, pretty much every single video that came out had a waterfall in it. Uh, I think this might be one of the first proper ones I've done, though, actually, since the game came out. Uh, and it is a proper big old... Um, sort of uh, realistic, well not realistic necessarily, but just a real waterfall, you know, it's not a water feature in a habitat. Um, what we're going for here is an actual sort of geological um, uh, site to, to see really, and it's one of the sort of key points of the uh, of the zoo and of the, of the sort of, of the conservation project uh, altogether. Had a lot of fun making it, kind of struggled a bit to be honest, landscaping just isn't really in my area, but I'm really trying to get better at it. Uh, so I spent a long time not only looking at the game, but also looking at examples of waterfalls, kind of how they're formed, uh, how they're sort of, uh, you know, naturally put together over so many years. A lot of the inspiration for this has obviously come from Niagara Falls, um, being just down the road from me, Niagara Falls, better about an hour and 15 minutes drive, I guess, if that. Um, a beautiful area of the world, Niagara, and Niagara on the lake a little bit higher up there. And um, Niagara Falls itself, um, a lot of people see a big waterfall and think, oh, that's Niagara Falls. Uh, Niagara Falls is actually three separate waterfalls uh, together. That's the sort of, the, the little region that they all sit in uh, is known as Niagara Falls. Um, but it's actually a group of three waterfalls on the, uh, the southern end of Niagara Gorge. And it's between, pretty much, um, it's the border of the US and uh, and Canada. So I think a lot of people would consider Niagara Falls to be uh, sort of quintessentially Canadian. Um, but, you know, technically they kind of sit on... In fact, two of the three falls are actually completely in America. Um, but I'll be honest with you, they don't look that great from the American side. The American side is kind of backed up onto them. The, the sort of incredible vistas that you see, uh, if you've never been to Niagara Falls, the incredible vistas that you see of the falls themselves uh, will most definitely be taken from the Canadian side uh, because they actually have the, the sort of falls facing them, so to speak. But it kind of sits there between uh, the province of Ontario and uh, the state of New York. And um, the big one, the one that everyone sort of thinks of when they think of Niagara Falls, that's called the Horseshoe Falls, and that's kind of what I modelled the uh, the larger waterfall on there. Um, and then uh, that one sort of straddles the border. But then a little bit further around, there's two more uh, known as the American Falls and then Bridal Veil Falls. I mean, it won't be long before they're one falls, basically. Bridal Veil Falls is a very smaller, uh, well, it's still massive, but compared to the other two, much smaller uh, waterfall that is separated by a very small uh, little island Island called Luna Island, which I, I'm pretty sure, I mean, I'm no geologist, but there's no way that ain't going to fall off at some point or wear down eventually. I mean, it might take a couple of thousand years still, but, uh, you know, it's just sort of separated a little bit. And then in between those two larger falls and the Horseshoe Falls is another island uh, called Goat Island, of all, <laughs> of all names, which I think is fantastic, with this incredible sort of stoic beauty. And it's, what's that there? Goat Island, <laughs> which I think is wicked. Um, it then goes in down into Lake Erie. A little bit further down the uh, the river, there are um, a, a massive set of rapids 
uh, which can get really really intense and then those rapids then fall down into a whirlpool sort of large circular opening of water where the where the water swirls around before heading off further down the, the river and uh, one of the uh, the really fantastic attractions that you can go to in this whirlpool is an aero car uh, which is a, a cable suspended uh, car that goes out across the whirlpool for some really fantastic views um, it actually has one end obviously the, the river pretty much is the border between Canada and the States so one end of the cable car is in the, is in Canada the other end is in America but you don't actually get off in America it's a Canadian attraction uh, it just sort of takes you across to a decent uh, distance into the whirlpool and then pretty much just stops and comes back again uh, and you all sort of swap over and you all huddle around in the car and move all around to the other side and swap over and come back again uh, and it was really awesome uh, when we went to do it this summer uh, I've been to Niagara Falls a few times now but this was the first time we ever did the aero car and I thought it was a really good um uh, really good experience and then when I, I'd finished up the episode with Mike uh, and we were talking about basically where the river had come from because I'd literally just drawn a blob of river because I knew I wanted that grizzly bear to have a river habitat um but then we were talking briefly about where this river came from and that kind of gave me the idea of doing a waterfall and then and then it sort of lended itself to making this um to this aero car so this is a um it's not a remake necessarily of Niagara Falls it's not a remake of the Whirlpool or the cable car itself because it's all been really squished down to get it into more of a uh, a manageable state purely for my own sense uh, it's basically some for my own sanity is that I couldn't if I just couldn't I just haven't got it in me to build a complete replica or a complete realistically sized waterfall and water system um you know people are doing some incredible stuff in this game including you know beautiful beautiful gardens and beautiful um you know meadows and all this sort of stuff but I just I, I haven't got it in me to spend that long <laughs> on such a large space so this whole thing is basically a sort of facsimile of the Niagara region squished down into uh probably half a mile <laughs> so uh, the cable car is, is quite a bit smaller than the one in uh, in real life uh, this one I reckon you could probably get about eight to ten people in it uh, the one actually at Niagara gets maybe 30 or so people in i suppose um but as far as what it looks like i think this is actually a pretty accurate uh, representation it, it the 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 top part of it here this sort of metal structure this it's a, basically a ballast uh, to keep it balanced uh, it, it is this sort of rather garish yellow <laughs> so i build it in yellow and it makes it quite easy to see what's going on i end up turning it down because it just it doesn't look right and i know that's what the one in real life looks like but yeah here it just didn't really uh, it didn't really fit at all but otherwise it's a relatively decent um approximation of it i'm really happy how it turned out obviously i have to say this because people always ask this isn't functional in the slightest it is purely for show um, there is no way i did briefly mess around with um there is a cable car in the game but it it looks like something out of a sci-fi movie it's it's re it's like a big bubble it kind of looks a little bit like the pods on the london eye the huge wheel down on the thames in london uh, england not london ontario where i live uh, but london the uk and um, they kind of looks like those sort of pods but yeah they just they're kind of crazy. Uh, some of the other rides are quite nice. The little the little uh, monorail is pretty good, and the train is obviously very good. But that that cable car is just crazy looking. So instead, I built it um, by with scenery pieces. So it just kind of sits over the lake here, and uh, and does what it needs to do. Uh, and then we need to obviously give it um, a, a place to go and a place to come back from. So like I say, it doesn't it doesn't actually. Um, uh, enter anything on the other side in the in uh, in Niagara it it's basically has a um I think it has the motor on the American side um and if it doesn't we're we're doing that here so the motor system would be in this building that I'm building here that's basically built into the cliff side and um yeah we don't we obviously we don't actually build any any motor or anything but it, but this is this would where that would be housed uh, and i'm trying my best to kind of um give it some grounding and give it some uh, sort of realistic uh, proportions and also a way for the staff to get into it obviously there's no nobody's going to be anywhere near this it's all just for show uh, but that's the kind of thing we do here on geekism it's what the kind of thing a lot of people who watch me and enjoy me like i think is this sort of slight more attention to, to detail um, so here we're building a place for the cables to go into and basically these cables um, just run on a on a spool so there's a spool of cable 
at the one end uh, and at the other end there's a there's a big sort of wheel that winds up and it sort of winds the cable across and then when it's done it reverses and winds it back again uh, and that's how the uh, the car enjoys itself so there's actually like any wheels or anything on the car it's basically connected to the cables and then it moves across now whether that not that's how it necessarily works in real life i don't know i couldn't find that much information about it uh, but the information i did find about a couple of other aero cars is that's basically how they work they don't they don't actually there's no motor or anything on the ca on the car itself um it's kind of attached to the cable and it's the cable the whole cables that move um which is uh which is kind of how, how i've gone for it here so here we're building a, a service ladder uh, down to uh, to an area that people can you know the obviously the mechanics or whatever and can get into for maintenance uh, and things like that uh, the um i've said this to a few people now the the on the cable car there's, there's a tool guide obviously sort of and and as they're going across they give you different facts and figures about the the whirlpool and when it was made and all, you know and all this sort of stuff one of my favorite things in the world is a good tour guide i love them i've always said that if i ever uh, if youtube never worked out <laughs> i would uh, i'd love to go and get a job as some sort of tour guide or something because i would have so much fun doing that i think but basically because they they get a really good little script going you know and they have the same gags that they tell every single group <laughs> and i just love that idea of being able to really hone a, an act almost you know uh, and this one we went on the uh, the, the chap said that the uh, the cables uh, were originally put in 1903 and uh, and they were made out of raw iron that was found from so-and-so mines down the road or whatever and they've been there since 1993 but don't worry they're going to replace them next week <laughs> and i love stuff like that absolutely love it uh thought it was great here i'm getting the height of the uh, the car itself so i can figure out how the height of uh, the um, the station i guess it uh, needs to be so that basically what we're doing here is building the space uh, there with like a, some feeder rails uh, that the car can sit into uh, and then we had a door onto this building. The idea is here that you would go into the building, uh, get your tickets or whatever, you know, go, go in for your uh, timed event or what have you. And then you would come out of this door here into the car to get on. But then as you come back, uh, you would get out of the cable car and take a right out onto a patio area that we're going to be building in just a little while. And that's a way of sort of the guests the guests flowing there but a lot of this is very sort of um serviceable uh utilitarian i know that's one of my new favorite words that i keep using but that's the best way of describing this you know it's uh, uh this was really quite fun to get that mix of uh sort of rustic architecture that we're going for here in luna canata but then also the sort of um very uh, precise and um you know sort of conformist build of the actual structure itself you know this is a concrete big concrete building that's incredibly weighted very sort of heavy foundations to actually keep this cable car up in the air and to keep it running uh, but then we still need to kind of make the whole place look nice as far as uh, the guests are concerned uh, the building itself is just based on a large uh, a log cabin building that I found on Pinterest. Uh, there is a, a Pinterest board for this um, for this zoo, uh, so if you look in the description, there'll be a link to that um, Pinterest board for the Kanata, which is basically just lots of uh, lots of wood structures, um, a few bits of uh, sort of blueprints for how these log cabins are put together, uh, some shots of some nature, you know, places. Uh, th this is heavily influenced by places like Yellowstone, um, places like um, uh, Yosemite, those those kind of sort of big American national parks. Uh, but then also we're going to try, once we get a little bit more into some more structures uh, and uh, spacing as we head up into the, into the actual main part of the zoo, we're going to be trying to get some more sort of Inuit references in there as well uh, and some more sort of actual Canadian references as, as opposed to um, the sort of generic North American wilderness style building um, but yeah this was just a lovely log cabin that I found I thought it was really nice it worked well as the uh, as basically the station gift shop slash viewing platform building for the falls uh, YouTuber falls so there's YouTuber falls there they moved down into the whirlpool and then just past the whirlpool there is um, uh uh, what did I say I was going to call it? Frame frame rate rapids, <laughs> because it uses loads of special effects uh, to make it look like a rapid system. Uh, but yeah, really happy how it turned out. The main reason it's laid out as it is, um, is because there is a weird, I don't want to cry bug, I'm not necessarily sure it's a bug, so to speak, but there's a weird issue that I think if you do a lot of um, terrain modification around water, uh, if you remove the water, you can't put it back in again, basically. So it's, if you place water down and then do some work around it, the water will stay there. 
but if you take it out and try and put it back in again it's it's not happy about the new form of the terrain uh, and that's the problem i had here basically that that little bit of river that we built so that mike could do the cliff and so that we had somewhere for the grizzly bear to go um i can't change that i can't make it bigger because the second i remove the water even if i don't change anything i can't put that water back in again uh, so it means we've had to be uh, clever with our, our sort of um structures working off that river so now we have a rapids going down into it and then also on the other side we will have to have a, a small rapids or something going back down to knock that river down a little bit so we can carry it on um, because we, I do want it running through the entire park I want I want to have the train go over the top of it I want to have bridges over the top of it with path um, it's going to be an interesting uh, kind of um, uh, feature that takes us through the whole park uh, and also, I think it was Mike actually suggested the river end up opening out into just marshland, uh, which we can use as uh, something like the pronghorn or the buffalo uh, habitat later on, which I think is a perfect idea. Uh, so again, whether or not I can figure out how to sort of get the, the water into a space like that, uh, one of the biggest problems is because the water is now volumetric technically, because animals have to know where they're able to swim, uh, it means that you really can't change the terrain around the water, uh, which is a shame, because it'd be quite nice to be able to just make a large pond of water that we fill up and then pull the terrain up from the water and and that would really make it um would make it a lot easier to create this kind of marshland this sort of uh, very fine layer of water across grass and across mud um but yeah i'm not too sure how we're going to do that yet i'm going to have a keep having to play around with that one uh, until uh, until i figure it out this building's coming across nice. Again, it's all completely uh, for show. There's no way of guests getting up into here at all. Um, although I may change that, to be honest with you. I thought about it afterwards, and I thought if we stick a, a habitat in there, or uh, sorry, uh, an exhibit in there, um, we could put us. It might get a few people wandering up here just because we're going to have like a woodland walk up to it. So I thought it might be a way of getting some people up here. And then also we could name the animal in that exhibit. Um, view of the falls or something like that and then the guests would say things like oh I've got a really good view of the, the falls here you know what I mean like call the animal YouTuber Falls and then the guests would say oh I've got a good view of YouTuber Falls but then they might say things like oh YouTuber Falls is pooing or you know <laughs> so maybe that won't work but I do kind of like the idea of having something up here a store or an exhibit or something that will uh, that will maybe get a few guests up here because at the moment um, in Planet Coaster they had a, a thing called a Vista Point which was basically a, play, a little marker you could put down on a path that would tell the guests there was something interesting to look at it was really useful um, for these kind of builds where the, there's not actually anything as far as game mechanics concerns to get guests over here um, but yeah it was really quite handy you could basically say to the guests oh this is something nice to look at and the guests would walk over and they would point and they would get their phones out that would be incredibly perfect for this uh, but unfortunately it, it wasn't something at least at launch it wasn't something that made its way over to uh, over to Planet Zoo from Planet Coaster. Uh, so here's that patio I was talking about. Still got to put some benches and stuff. Uh, unfortunately, this build is a little unfinished, to be honest with you. The, the, this structure itself is actually pretty done, but this video, everything I got done in this video is a little unfinished. I would like to have cooked it a little bit more. I would like to have um, probably held back a day. Normally what I do is have these uh, sort of speed build episodes, either Nuda Kanata or uh, if we're just doing a sort of singular habitat build like we did uh, Saltwater Crocs the other day that went down really well. Uh, normally I've got a couple of those on the go and I sort of jump to them when I'm feeling creative uh, but then I'll also always have some franchise mode stuff on the go or, um, or a Pimp My Habitat or something like that that doesn't quite require the the, uh, cra the crazy muscles quite as much pin my habitats pretty much right themselves based on uh, what the uh, what the contributor has done already uh, whereas here you're kind of making it all come uh, all come out fresh so normally i have a couple of them on the go and then if uh, if something like new canasta does end up taking a little bit longer than normal that goes back a day and then i can bring in something like a pit my habitat or a franchise mode episode into it uh, to fill the gap um, unfortunately i really had to get this out today because tomorrow um at, as at time of this being released tomorrow i'm doing a charity live stream to raise money to uh, sponsor animals at toronto zoo and um it's going to be really awesome i really hope you can join me it's going to be uh, 6 a.m till 6 p.m it's a 12 hour stream uh, 6 a.m to 6 p.m uh, eastern time that is so what's that like it's pretty early in the morning till early afternoon 
Pacific, I guess. And then in the UK, it's 11 a.m. till 11 p.m. Um, so I hope you can join me for that. It's going to be here on YouTube. There's, there should be a thing up already saying that it's coming in so many hours. You know, one of those videos that aren't, aren't quite a video yet. Um, and it's going to be really awesome. Like I say, every penny we take from donations that day is going to go towards sponsoring animals at Toronto Zoo. For every $100 we get, we can sponsor a new animal. Um, and we get like a little a little poster that says Geekism's community sponsored so-and-so animal. And I think we get some like trading cards as well that we'll give away uh, to the community and loads of other things. And basically, we're going to be playing Planet Zoo all day long, 12-hour stream off Planet Zoo. So I'm going to be back and forth between projects. We'll probably, we'll most likely do some franchise mode. We might even do a live Pimp My Habitat, uh, which could be quite fun. Uh, but obviously, I'm going to want to come in and have a good chunk of the day on Nuna Kanata. Um, so I couldn't really leave this video until after that because, you know, otherwise everyone's going to have seen on the live stream what we've done. Uh, but also, the 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 rest of the stuff that needs to be done with this area now is is kind of your polishing it's kind of your finishing off so it's mostly rock work and terrain and foliage which lends itself to a live stream more so than uh, you know full on detail building does so uh, so that's what we're going to be doing a good chunk of the day tomorrow we'll be finishing off this area live uh, with rock work with foliage uh, the water itself needs a little bit of work still needs to be added some special effects there to uh, kind of create the rapids and things and, uh, and yeah, it'd be really fun. So hopefully you can join me. Like I say, at time uh, as this video goes out, it's happening tomorrow. So if you're watching this video as it comes out, make sure you join us tomorrow. If you're watching this video the day after it come out, stop. There's a good chance I'm live right now. Go and have a look. <laughs> and obviously, if you're watching this later in the week, uh, the live stream will uh, or should be at least up on the channel for you to watch back as well. Right then, last couple of things then. We've got this viewing area that looks over the cliff. I really just wanted a bit of an area there that people could step away and maybe have a look, good look of the uh, the cliff face that Mike Sheets built for us. Um, and in Mike's video uh, on his channel, his garden rescue video, which is the series he does where he goes into other people's parks and does some work for them. And that was the series that he came in and did, um, and did the cliff face for me. Uh, he basically did a little science lesson. It was really awesome. He kind of showed, using in-game pieces, how these uh, huge sort of River, riverside cliffs are created um, through um, erosion and, and, and the plates pushing together and bringing them up and that. And I think it was so good. And he got little arrows going everywhere as well, showing you. And I thought, well, let's have a bit of a homage to that uh, by building some of these signs here. One thing I did notice about um, when I was at Niagara, these are everywhere. These signs telling you all different bits of information about people who've gone over the falls in past years, you know, or, or you know, and things about how fast the river's running. And, and all that kind of stuff and the wildlife that survives because of it and all this uh, really fascinating stuff. So I thought we'll try and replicate that a little bit with some uh, art shaped billboards. I think they've turned it pretty well. So there's one about the stone coming up out of the ground like Mike talked about. The second one's meant to be like waves, like like the river flowing down. And then the third one is showing you about larger chunks of the of the cliff sort of falling off and how it's dangerous. I, I, I'm really quite pleased with these. I think this might be the best bit of the episode with these little billboards to be honest. <laughs> um, because at the minute we've only really got the in-game uh, habitat billboards. Planet Coaster came with billboards where we can import our own images. And if we ever get those we'll probably come back to these and do something in Photoshop but uh, as it stands with art shapes I, <laughs> I think those have turned out pretty well they look like what they're meant to look like uh, finally um, I wanted some of these uh, uh, like binocular style things uh, this one was on the workshop the awesome Rudy Renkamel made it um, it's a telescope it looks a bit like a gun <laughs> uh, but to be fair to Rudy he made this in beta so he was very limited with the pieces he had um, so I, I put it in and, and looked at it I thought no Joe it's pretty good but I think we can make it look a little bit more like one of those um, sort of traditional uh, binocular style things where you put a quarter in or whatever and it lets you have 10 minutes uh, looking through the binoculars so uh, we use Rudy's base here to to build it so thanks to Rudy for, for putting that on the workshop because that really took a lot of the uh, time away uh, from it we place a couple of those around uh, and then the last thing I'm trying to do is put a couple of benches on this area but I really really struggle with that so I'm going to cut it and instead we'll jump into a live section to have a little look at what the final product looks like Okay, so this, uh, this is the area that we've worked with today. Again, very much a work in progress, but really needed to just sort of get it out on video so we can work on it on the live stream tomorrow. Uh, the features are all in place. As you can see, it's all this tying together. So it's all the sort of foliage up here and down this side. I have this huge part. For some reason, I insist on building right up against the edge of the park. Um, but yeah, so now all this has got... This was staff path, but now we've opened all this up. This path is all far away enough from that building, so we've got no problem 
problems there. But now we can come up where was staff path will now be like a sign that says uh, Riverside Walk or something like that. Um, but we've got the staff area there. There's a little bit of decorating. But what we might do is turn this into a... a sort of conservation education room regarding the grizzly bears, you know, because we actually have these uh, sets of windows here, um, which obviously are just for show, but that, this would be the sort of place that you would come and, um, uh, you know, have a good have a good look at the grizzly and also provide uh, a viewing area for when the weather's bad, which is going to be a big thing in this part because obviously a good chunk of the year the weather is pretty bad uh, here in Canada. Oh, it's dinner time. Oh, look how happy the grizzly is. Uh, Senator Grizzly Bear. He's getting some din din in the termite mound. That's good. This wasn't his original keeper. Original keeper just stood at the door and wandered off, so uh, she was fired. But he's going to come and get some uh, get some dinner. Are you? Yeah. Get yourself some food. Good stuff. What's that on the bottom of that tree? That seems. Oh, it's two trees put together, but one's raised up a bit. That's me being rubbish. There we go. Anyway, that's a change back. We'll fix that later. Uh, so, yes, you can now come up. There's going to be, again, it's all very sparse at the moment. This will all get filled in with some bushwork and stuff. Um, but now you can come up here and get a real sort of good view. I might even clear out a couple of the trees Mike's put down here just to give a really good view of the, uh, of the cliff face there. And you can read some information about it as well while you're up here. Maybe do like an ice cream cart or something here. That'd be quite cool. Uh, and then we have this lovely little woodland walk that's not in the woodland at the minute, but will be a woodland walk that comes out open to this view here. So again, um, because of the scale, this is a little imposing, if I'm honest with you, but I'm still kind of happy with how it's worked out. But then we'll have another viewing area here where you can look down onto frame rate rapids. And um, and obviously all this work, all this cliff here, we're going to have to try and do what Mike's done amazingly here. I don't know how I'm going to get on with that, uh, but we need to do the same with all this here. But then we come up to the aero car, um, so you can get in and get some really incredible views of uh, of YouTuber Falls there. Again, all this rock work needs doing, uh, and we'll get some benches and stuff out here as well for show. Um, for for show that is as, as opposed to not working not for show okay just want to point that out so I'm not trying to be hip or anything still a little bit of work needs to be done here doorways and some bins and stuff at the back maybe you want to carry this up into like a service entrance here that goes off down to the park uh, that way and then here I've kind of just sort of laid this out to give me a rough idea of shaping and sizing now obviously this really for for a waterfall this size this river needs to go off up into one of these hills here but I, I just it isn't possible i mean we could take the river all the way back here but to be honest with you this is never meant to be a massive product project started this purposefully because there was only half a dozen maybe animals that will fit in it um so i want to make sure that it doesn't get too big because there's loads of other things i want to do i want to do like a modern african build i want to do a british based um eden project style build as well uh, you know there's so much i want to do in the game and i don't want to just have this be another pinewood hills that takes me three years and never gets done so the whole thing here that in reality would span a couple of miles uh, is actually what maybe five hundred meters or something top so um so yeah it's it's a truncated version of of, of reality but i'm i'm okay with that for for the sake of uh project scope but yeah i think it looks nice like i say if you want to see all the detailing we're going to be doing a good chunk of that tomorrow as this video goes out on our live stream while we raise money for the animals of toronto zoo thank you so much for watching i really hope you've enjoyed it until the next one be good